Before we discuss the probability distribution of a discrete random variable, I would like to review some commonly used adjectives in probability problem. So we let x be a random variable. So let's say the first the first one is at most x is at most n. What does that mean? At most n means the maximum is n, including n itself. So that is x less than or equals to n. So what if you have at least? at least means n or above. So that is x greater than or equal to n. And then we have two straightforward, straightforward ones. So we have less than, so less than n. So it's just x less than n, no equal. And then greater than or more than n is just x greater than n. What about no less than, no less than? The opposite of less than is greater than or equal to. If you have a no more than, the opposite of more than is less than or equal to. And then there is a between. Between there is an inclusive and there is an exclusive. Inclusive means x is between two numbers, a and b. Exclusive means you remove the equal. That makes a big difference in discrete random variable, but the equal makes no difference in continuous random variable. Let's take a look at the first problem. So the first problem, we have this probability distribution. So I let x be a discrete random variable. So every time you do a probability experiment, there are how many outcomes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 columns. So every time you you do a statistic experiment. So every time you take an action, you have nine results. So what is the probability that the result is equals to negative four? The answer is 0 0.1, 0 0.01. What is the probability that the result is equals to zero? The answer is 0.20. You take an action. What is the probability? You get a seven. The answer is 0 0.11. And then I want to answer this probability question. So the first one is write a full expression to calculate the expected value of x. So the problem is so long. Uh, before I before we move on, could you take a screenshot of this so you don't have to constantly go back to the beginning of this video to find out what the problem is. So part A, we are looking for the expected value of a random variable. So we call this expected value of x. The formula is you take the sum of each probability times x or you say you say x times probability either one is fine so the expected value is you take negative 4 times 0 0.01 plus negative 1.5 times 0 0.03 and then plus negative 1 times 0 0.10 plus 0 times 0 0.20 plus 2 times 0 0.30 and then plus 3 times 0 0.07 and then plus 5 times 0 0.09 and then plus 7 times 0 0.11 and then plus 8 times 0 0.09 and then you add this up to get the expected value. So in my problem, I gave you that the expected value is equals to 3. So ex is equals to 3. So that is the first problem. Uh, allow me to uh, take, a, take a moment to, to copy this. So I can just paste and then uh, use the table so I don't need to go, go back to, to my videos too. And then B is find the variance. So what is the formula to find variance? So variance is VAR of X. So that is the sum of you take each X, subtract the expected value, square the result times the probability. That is equals to the first x is negative 4 and then you subtract 3, which 3? This 3. Square the result times probability. And then plus negative 1.5 minus 3 square times probability. And then plus negative 1 minus 3 square the result times probability and then plus zero minus three square times probability and then you keep going until you finish 
every single x value. So 0 and then 2 minus 3 squared times 0 point 30. The probability of 0 is a 0 point 20, right? So point 20, point 30, and then a 3 minus 3 squared times 0 point 07, and then 5 minus 3 square times 0 0.09 and then a 7 minus 3 square times 0 0.11 and then 8 minus 3 square times 0 0.09 so that gives you a variance to save your time I told you what the variance is so to, the variance is approximately equals to 9 and then in part C, the standard deviation of the random variable x is the square root of variance. So that is equals to 3. All right, so that is part A, B, and C. And then uh, the next part, I would like to find in part D, I would like to find the probability that x is less than 3. All right, so x is less than 3. Let's um, paste the table over here. So that helps me a little bit so x is less than 3 so less than 3 that means I do not count the 3 so I have to let's let's e erase the equal I have to include the 2 0 negative 1 negative 1.5 and negative 4 so the probability is equals to the sum of those probability 0.30 plus 0.20 plus 0 0.11 0.03 plus 0.01 so whatever the sum is that is your answer and then part E is you have probability that x is greater than 0 so greater than 0 I have 2 3 5 7 and 8 those x values are greater than 0 so you add the probabilities for me 0 0.30 0 0.07 0 0.09 0.11 and then 0.09 so that is your answer and then f is less than or equal to 3 f less than or equal to 3 x is less than or equal to 3 in other words that means at most 3 what is the difference between part f and part d one with an equal one without an equal if there is an equal right that means you have to include 3 so this will be a 3 2 0, negative 1, negative 1 1.5, and negative 4. Yes, you're right. You can just add this again, and then you include the probability of 3. So other than you add this, you also plus the probability of 3, which is 0 0.07. So the answer is, you add this up again. So you take, the, you, you, you take this answer, and then you add 0 0.07 to it. That gives you the answer to part F. Other than this, we count negative 3 all the way to negative 4, right? But we did not count 5, 7, and 8. So we can use the idea of complementary event. What is complementary events? Complementary event is you take 1, which is the total. You add this decimal, you get the total, right? The total is 1. You take 1, subtract the probabilities that you do not want to include again take one subtract the probabilities that you do not want to include which is 0 0.09 0 0.11 0 0.09 you will get the same answer if you do this so that is part f and then part g is greater than or equal to zero so probability the x is greater than or equal to zero which is at least zero so that includes zero two three Five, seven, eight. So you add this probability plus 0.30 plus 0.07 plus 0.09 plus 0.11 plus 0.09. So that is the answer to G. And then H. What is H? H is at most negative one. So probability at most negative one. At most means less than or equal to negative one. So let's uh, paste the table over here again so we don't have to go back to the video. So less than or equal to negative 1. So we have to take negative 1 
negative 1.5 and negative 4. So that is the probability is 0.10 plus 0.03 plus 0.01. So that is your answer. And then I is probability at most phi, which is x less than or equals to phi. So that means we have to go from 5 all the way to negative 4, right? 5, 3, 2, 0, negative 1, negative 1 1.5, and negative 4. The only thing that we did not include is 7 and 8. So I am going to take the shortcut. Using complementary event, I am going to take 1 minus 0 0.11 minus 0 0.09. You did not include those two, right? So that is equals to 80, which is the same as the sum of all these probability. So each of these numbers has a probability, right? The sum is equals to 0.80. Not the sum of those x value, the sum of their probabilities is equals to 0.80. So that is part i, and then for part k, we have at least negative 1. So at least means x greater than or equals to negative 1. So that is negative 1 all the way to 8, right? what is not included. So the number that is not included, they are 4 and negative 1.5. So take the advantage of complementary event again, we take 1, subtract the probability of negative 1.5, subtract the probability of negative 4. Look how easy that is. It's 1 minus 0 0.04, right? So we get 0 0.96. If you add this numbers up, the, their probability, not the x value, uh, you might need a calculator to, to, get your, to get your answer, to make sure your answer is accurate. And then the next one is L. L is probability x between negative 1 and 7 inclusive. Inclusive means you use equal. So that is you go from negative 1 all the way to 7. You add these six probabilities. So that is 0.10 plus 0.20 plus 0.30 plus 0.07 plus 0.05 plus 0.06 plus 0.07 plus 0.08 plus 0.09 plus 0.10 plus 0.20 plus 0.30 and then plus 0.11. And then the last one, M, is not inclusive. So M is not inclusive, so that is a negative 1 less than x less than 7. So this time you don't take negative 1, you don't take 7. You only have 0, 2, 3, and 5. So that is equals to 0 0.30, 0 0.07, 0 0.09. Wait, did I miss anything? 0, point, oh, I missed a 0 0.20. 0 0.20, 30, 0 0.07, and 0 0.09. Yep, so that is your answer. Is the inclusive and exclusive important in this problem? So the inclusive... And exclusive, is that important? The answer is yes. That is super important. Why? Because x is a discrete random variable. That's the reason. Alright, that will be all in this problem. I see you all in the next problem.